This is part 53 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to load HTML data from the server using jQuery AJAX load function. First, let's understand what is AJAX. AJAX stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. AJAX allow parts of the page to be updated without having to reload the entire page. Let's understand what we mean by this statement with an example. Here, we have a web page that captures first name, last name, email and income. Now next to every text box, we also have a div element. Whenever a text box receives focus, we want to display the help text associated with that text box next to the div element that is present next to that field. So here income field has the focus. So the help text associated with the income field is displayed in the div element that's present next to that field. Now all this help text is present on the server. So any time when a field receives focus, we want to load that help text associated with that field from the server. If we have to achieve this without using AJAX, then we will have to do a full page post back to the server. So the server is going to process the request and send the entire page HTML back to the client. Now, just because we want to display the help text associated with a specific field, look at the amount of data that is exchanged between the client and the server. The server is sending the entire page HTML to the client. So the amount of data that is exchanged is more. And another problem is this full page refreshes cause screen flicker. With AJAX, the server is not going to send the entire HTML back. Instead, it is going to send just the help text and the client is going to receive that help text and it is going to update the development without having to reload the entire page. So let's see how to you know, load this data from the server using this jQuery AJAX load function. So if you look at this load function, it has got three parameters, URL, data, and complete. Out of these three parameters, URL is the only required parameter. The other two are optional. So this URL parameter specifies the URL to which the request is sent. Data parameter specifies a JSON object or a string that is sent to the server along with the, uh, with the request. And this complete parameter specifies a callback function that is called when the request completes. In our upcoming videos, we'll look at an example of using data and complete parameters. In this video, let's look at an example of using this URL parameter. So the first thing to do here is to design a web page that looks like this. So let's flip to Visual Studio. So within the body section, we need a table. And this table is going to have a TR. And this TR is going to contain three TDs. So here, we want to display this literal text, first name. And then we need a text box. So let's use an input element. So input type equals text. And let's give it an ID. So let's call this first name. And then we need a development in the third TD. So dev. And let's give this development an ID. Let's actually call this first name help dev. OK? Similarly, we need TRs for last name, email, and income. In the interest of time, I have already typed the required HTML. So let's copy that from the notepad and paste it right here. Now, if you look at this HTML, it's, it's very much similar to what we have here in the first name TR. So last name and then a text box. And look at the IDs. So here, the ID of the text box is first name. And the ID of the div is first name help div. And for last name, the ID of the text box is last name. And the ID of the div element is last name help div. So the div elements have got an ID. And that is equal to you know the ID of the input field, that is the text box, plus this literal text help div. I have intentionally named them that way. And in a bit, you'll understand why. So for email, the ID is email. And the div is email help div. Similarly, for income, it is income for text box and income help div for the div element. Okay? So if we view this page in the browser, this is 
is how it looks like. So we have all the fields. And next to those fields, we have the div elements. Now, the next step is to include the help text. Right? So the help text is going to be present in another HTML file. And obviously, that file will be present on the server. So to our project, let's go ahead and add an HTML file. And let's call this help.html. OK, so we don't require all this HTML here. We just need um, a div element. So I'm going to give this div an ID. And the ID of this div, I'm going to intentionally match that with you know, this div ID. And again, in a bit, you'll understand why is that. OK, so div ID equals first name help div. And this div is going to contain the help text for first name field. So you are first name as it appears in passport okay so similarly we need to have you know help text for last name email and income and in the interest of time i have already typed the required html so let's copy it from here and paste it there okay so our help text is present in this html file that is help.html and this is our uh, page where we want to display the help text. Okay, and so now all that is left is to write the jQuery code to load the help text from that help.html file. All right. So the first thing is we want you know associate focus events for all these text boxes. So we want to find all these text boxes, and I'm going to use this jQuery selector to find all the text boxes. So give me all input elements where type attribute equals text. So this is going to give us all the text boxes. And I'm going to store these text boxes in a variable. Let's call this text boxes. All right, so we have all the text boxes now. Now, with each text box, we want to associate focus event handler. So when the focus event is raised, we want to call this function. So what do we want to do? Whenever a text box receives focus, so when, for example, first name text box receives focus, we want to display the help text associated with first name field within the div element that is present next to the first name field, right? So we need to find the ID of the div element. And look at the way we have named them. The ID of this div is first name help div. The ID of uh, last name help div is last name help div. So the ID is equal to the ID of the input field plus this literal text help div, right? So I'm going to create a variable here. Let's call this help div. And this variable is going to contain the ID of this help div. And we are going to compute that programmatically, OK? So to get that ID, I'm going to get the ID of the text box itself. So how do we get the ID of the text box? You know, this focus, whenever the first name text box receives focus, you know, this function will be called. And at that point, when we use this keyword, this represents the control that has received focus, right? And we want to retrieve the ID attribute value. So I'm going to use ATTR function. So this is going to give us the ID of the text box that has received focus. For example, if first name text box has received focus, this expression is going to give us first name. And to that, if we append this literal text help div, then we are going to get the ID that is associated with that input field, right? So what's the next thing to do? Within this help div, we want to load the help text from this help.html file, right? So to do that, we are going to make use of this load function. So where do we want to load that help text? Into this div element. So this is the ID of the div element. So I'm going to use the jQuery ID selector. So hash is the ID selector. And then to that, let's append help div. That's the ID. And on this div element, I'm going to call the load function. So we want to load the help text from the server into this div element. So here, we are going to just specify the URL. So what is the URL of the page? The URL of the page is help.html. So help.html. 
Okay, so when the text box receives focus, it's going to load that HTML into this development. Okay, now not only that, when the text box loses focus, what do we want to do? We want to empty the development, right? So I'm actually going to make a copy of this. And when the text box loses focus, blur event is raised. So when blur event is raised, we want to handle that. Find the help div in our uh, of the text box that has just lost focus. And what do we want to do? We want to empty that development. And to do that, I'm going to use HTML and then pass an empty string. OK. All right. So let's save the changes. Let's go ahead and reload this page. And look at this. When a text box receives focus, look at that. We get the help text. Your first name as it appears in Passport, your last name. You know, basically, whenever a text box receives focus, look at that. Next to each development, we are getting the entire help text. I mean, the entire content of this help.html. Okay, that's because here we have specified a help.html. So what is this going to do? This is going to load the entire content, you know, from this page help.html, and that will be loaded into this development. But that's not what we want. We want to load the help text. You know, when first name text box receives focus, we want to load only the help text that is associated with that first name field. Okay, so to do that, what I'm going to do is give a space here, and then I'm going to use the ID selector again, pound. And if you look at this help.html, look at the ID of the development that contains the help text for the first name field. It is intentionally named first name help dev. And, you know, that matches with the ID of this div. Okay, and we have you know, this help div, for example, when first name text box receives focus, you know, this variable is going to contain first name help div, you know, that string, which matches with the ID of this development. Okay, so here I'm going to pass the ID of this development. Okay, and this variable contains that ID, right? So to that, I'm going to append help div. Okay, so basically what we are saying here is, Within help.html file, we have an element with ID. For example, when first name text box receives focus, this help div will contain first name help div, right? That's the ID. So basically, we are saying here within help.html, there is an element with ID uh, first name help div. So from that element, you know, load that HTML into this element, whatever this selector um, returns. Okay, now but keep in mind whether you do this or whether you load the you know whether you specify just help.html in both the cases the entire HTML content of help.html will be loaded you know from the server to the client. So on the client it's going to find the element and then retrieve its content and then load that into this div. Okay, so let's save the changes. Let's go ahead and reload this page and look at this. And the first name text box receives focus, your first name as it appears in la, uh, Passport. And when the text box loses focus, look at that, it goes away. Similarly, your last name and email and annual income. Okay, and look at how, you know, fast it happens. So here is the HTML of help.html page. Here is the HTML of our HTML page one. And here is the jQuery code. Thank you for listening and have a great day.